Well, hey there. I thought I would uh, do a little walkthrough on the construction of this um, massive painting project I just finished. Um, for anybody who cares to know what all went into this type of digital drawing and, and uh, subsequent digital painting, um, it's I don't have a name for this yet. Um, it is a, a male gorgon, basically, which actually there is no such thing of in Greek mythology, but hey, this is a creature I decided to make up. So, and yes, for anybody who's thinking, I used myself as a reference to get the lighting right on this and everything like that. So if there's a slight lightness of me in there. Then, uh, yeah, that's uh, not accidental. Although I will say that as I drew it, I made no real effort to content continue to hold on to my likeness because that really wasn't the point of the drawing. Anyway, this is the original first tonal drawing uh, that I used to begin to work through. And uh, with it is, you know, there were certain things that were set up um, like, um, like the snakes, ignore that, um, who I, um, which I decided to, let me get out of that tool there, which I decided to, uh, put a whole lot more detail into later, but this is how it all started. Snakes were much more basic and, uh, um, and, uh, with, with a slick skin. But as you can see here in the drawing, it's a combination of uh, mostly just sketches and a couple of cross hatching things for shading. I was just trying to block in with uh, the actual drawing and, and contain the, the, how the light was going to fall on this thing. So from here, I went to begin to break out the layers so I could begin the final painting. So I'm going to go over to this. The other thing I added was a breastplate, so I had to go in and do this drawing to work out how I generally wanted that to look. So with that, um, we created, I created, excuse me, um, I'm going to lock that layer because I don't want to be chantage. So what I ended up with was this base drawing. Um, which began to be where I worked from this point forward. And as you can see over here on the right, there's all sorts of layers um, involved in this drawing. So the first thing I did um, was to begin to break out the details. And so I'm gonna go to this layer called dark black, and that's where I, uh, sorry, not dark black, I meant lower black. And that is where I went in to do the detail on these snakes, where I took them into a whole nother area you know as you can see where they began this way i decided to break them out like this so now we end up with this part of the drawing which is where i went in to begin to put some more um detailed areas into it that i could begin to add tone and color and everything like that so with that lower black um, I also added some upper black in some areas to bring in the real detail of the snakes and everything like that. Um, as this continued forward, I, um, in no particular order, the face actually came late in it, but I'm going to go ahead and put the face in now. So this was the oil painting. I used Kyle brushes to, uh, um, to do the painting. If you notice, um, up here, I use this Kyle brush basic oil, which is what I use to paint and blend all the, all the paintings and everything in there for that. Um, so that is how the face came in. And of course the beard being a primary example, uh, uh, primary part of the illustration. That's the base I put in for the beard before I went in to paint the beard, um, which looks like this. And the fun thing about the beard is that's the original color I began to work with on the beard. I was looking for kind of a real blondish kind of, a, you know, Nordic kind of vibe and everything like that. But the more I looked at that, the more I didn't really like the color. Um, so I went 
here and added a saturation change and tonal color change and brought the beard into a color that I felt was more appropriate for the illustration as a whole. A little more, a little more realistic maybe. Um, so as I continued forward with this, we also had to start, we, I don't know where I get this we from. Um, here's the base illustration again. So we see kind of how it's beginning to fall together with the face and the outline. Um, then I wanted to start throwing the background back. So I began to break it down with a, a dark black background, lighten some of the snakes. Um, then I put a coloration in the background, um, which is kind of greenish. And overall, that's how that began to fall in. As things went on, I decided I didn't like that green. It's kind of how it began, but I needed something that I thought was a little more impressive, a little magical, um, and the right contrast against the the skin color and, and what would be some other things. So I decided to change the hue and saturation on that background and move it into a blue area like that, which I thought helped things pop a whole lot more. Um, so as this continued on, um, a dark base was added to the snakes so I gave them kind of a reddish background um, is to begin to build and paint from and uh, that led eventually to the actual coloring of the snakes where I went in and painted each one individually to get their scales and their uh, shading and everything like that kind of in, into control. Um, then I added some shadows where the snakes would cast a shadow on each other from the obvious lower lighting in this. Um, then back to the other base of the drawing um, came Let's see here. Oh, yeah, the breastplate. Wasn't sure how things were going to go with the breastplate, but I ended up liking where, where it netted out. So I, I gave the breastplate a, a base color to work with so that that could then come in and, uh, and paint it in oil, which came out like this. And this is showing the breastplate with the uh, base drawing multiplied on top that I was using kind of as a this guide. When I turn the outline off, you can see the painting in more of its raw form, which I kind of liked better as I looked at that. So what we're looking at now are all the layers so far that have been painted in and added um, without the benefit of having the base reading through. Um, so, uh, some of these were underneath the face. The face actually did have a base background to it that kind of is no longer visible by the time I finished the face. Um, but those were put in prior to me painting it. Um, then of course the neck and the, and the sleeves had to be added at some point. So uh, I gave a background basic base for that to work with and then painted them in, in oil, just like I did with the face and the breastplate using cow, uh, the oil, um, standard oil cow brush. So you see where that's coming from. All right, so then I had to get into more detail, which began with the eyes and the teeth, which on this layer includes all the snake's eyes as well as the character's eyes. Um, there are two spots where I did that. Um, here, and you can see the the eyes and the teeth for the snake and the human, all, or the, the monster, the character, <laughs> the Corgon, whatever, all show up at one time when I turn that link on. And you'll notice also uh, the, my original eye color for the character was blue. You know, I was going for that kind of Norse kind of vibe. But then the more I looked at it, the more I thought about what this creature was, blue wasn't the right eye color. So again, I went in with a hue saturation control and change those eyes to 
red, which I like so much better. Um, I did the same thing with the teeth. The teeth were very gray here, so I came in and added kind of a warm tone to the teeth. Um, and then the teeth were popping too much and needed to be shaded back, so I added shading to the teeth. And I did not want pearly white teeth in this. I wanted something that was a little bit more appropriate for something of the monster, so I went with kind of antiqued looking looking teeth there. Um, but I did add highlights to both the eyes and the teeth in this drop here, as you can see. Um, and that comes pretty much down to most of it. Um, let's see what I'm missing here. Right, so the whole thing was painted against this gray background that I created. So this is what it looks like without the gray, which is kind of fascinating. Um, and then you add that gray background in, and, and it really begins to bring it all around. So uh, that's something I meant to show earlier. Um, breastplate outline is no longer in play, but there it is, briefly. You can see how it affects a little bit as an overlay using multiply on on uh, that. Actually, I didn't use multiply on that. I just used a transparency of like 11 or 12 percent. Um, let's see what do we got here. That I believe is the entire painting without the base. Yeah. So what happened at this point? I'm going to turn the base back on. Um, so that's the drawing about the base, and I add the base, bam, and everything comes in pretty heavy and weighted and, sh and shaded better. Now, the thing I did after that is I flattened this entire layer, and I brought in this. And what I did with this layer is I painted in everything. Like, if you look closely over here, I did not want all this cross-hatching and everything that you see reading over on top of the illustration, but I did want some of the virtue of the the black outlines and definition to come through. So what I wanted to do was go in, flatten all this out, and then come in with my paintbrush and drag and move around and, and paint everything in so that I came out with a fully painted look like that instead of this. And I did this throughout the entire illustration, and that includes up around the eyes, where you can see some cross hatching near the eyes and around the face, and uh, went in and painted that. And this was the first pass. Um, and then, of course, I decided that uh, the shadows were not quite what I wanted with the original drawing, which I'm going to go back to. as a matter of comparison where the base drawing showed the shadows in, in the highlights in a slightly different position than how I painted them so I, I knew something was bothering me about that so I went back in and matched the shadows to the base drawing better by repainting some of those areas so now I got what I was after and a finished illustration that uh, looks this way and of course a signature added in the style of the painting, kind of carved into the breastplate. And there you have it, uh, the final illustration of this yet-to-be-named monster. There you go.